Michael Weber, Artistic Director of Chicago's Porchlight Music Theater. Premiering in movie theaters November 6, 1942, Springtime in the Rockies, with a screenplay by Walter Bullock and Ken Englund, with music by Harry Warren and lyrics by Mac Gordon, was first filmed in 1936 by 20th Century Fox under the title Second Honeymoon, the same title of the short story the film is based on. When preparing this musical remake, the studio paid $1,000 for a waiver from the copyright proprietors of the song When It's Springtime in the Rockies, so that there would be no legal conflict using the title Springtime in the Rockies. Legal records also reveal that 20th Century Fox paid approximately $1,160 to Republic Pictures, which had prior claim on the title for use on a Roy Rogers picture. That film was then released as as Romance on the Range in 1942. At various points in production, actors Alice Fay, Fred Astaire, and Rudy Valley were each considered for various roles in the musical that eventually went to a cast including Betty Grable, John Payne, Carmen Miranda, Cesar Romero, Charlotte Greenwood, Edward Everett Horton, and Harry James and his orchestra. The hit song Run Little Raindrop Run was written specifically for another film, The Great American Broadcast, in 1941, and was to be sung by Alice Faye. The reasons why it was not used in that movie is not clear, although the sheep music was still published with the words sung by Alice Faye. Eight months after Springtime in the Rockies appeared in theaters, Harry James and Betty Grable wed. It was a second marriage for both of them. According to sources, they named their firstborn daughter, Victoria Elizabeth, after the character Grable played in Springtime in the Rockies. The couple stayed married for more than 22 years, divorcing in 1965. According to a Hollywood Reporter news item, the studio intended to shoot the picture on location at Lake Louise in Canada due to defense regulations during World War II hindering exterior shooting in the Hollywood area. However, only background shots were filmed in Canada. Betty Grable had been disappointed in not getting to sing on the screen the classic wartime love song, I Had the Craziest Dream, the tune being assigned in the film to the Harry James vocalist Helen Forrest. In this radio adaptation, Betty and Dick Powell share the song twice, first a complete rendition and then a partial reprise at the end. You'll also hear Carmen Miranda deliver a samba which had not been featured in the movie, Tico Tico. This fast-moving number soon would become a Miranda specialty, and she would record it for Decca Records on January 27, 1945, then perform it in the 1947 film Copacabana, co-starring Groucho Marx. Unfortunately, this radio adaptation of Springtime in the Rockies does not contain the original opening, commercials, nor closing credits. So, as a special treat, in addition to the broadcast itself, we have the radio preview for the film. The program, 20th Century Fox is on the Air, offered listeners snippets of the scenes and songs of soon-to-open films with members of the original film cast. Immediately following this film preview broadcast, will be the full radio version of this story. Here on the May 22nd, 1944 episode of the Lux Radio Theater are, from the 1942 film, Betty Grable as Vicki Lane and Carmen Miranda as Rosita Murphy, with Dick Powell as Dan Christie and Verna Felton as Phoebe Gray in Springtime in the Rockies. <laughs> Century Fox is on the air. The Hitmaker Studio invites you to a radio side seat for an Airways preview of its latest and greatest tuneful triumph, Springtime in the Rockies. It's gay, it's glamorous, it's gorgeous. A sparkling story set to music in America's most romantic playground, photographed in technicolor, with the year's brightest array of stars reaching a new high for hilarity and happiness, rhythm and romance. 
There's blonde, beautiful Betty Grable, popular John Payne, dynamic Carmen Miranda, romantic Cesar Romero, mirthful Charlotte Greenwood, hilarious Edward Everett Horton, and the nation's top radio and recording orchestra, Harry James and his music makers, playing six great song hits in the superb James Manor. And now it's lights, camera, action! As the preview gets off to a musical start with Harry James and his music makers making sweet music with one of the Gordon and Warren tunes, I Had the Craziest Dream. Helen Forrest on the vocal. most romantic spots is beautiful Lake Louise, an ideal setting of towering snow-capped peaks, sky-blue waters, and shimmering green trees. This is where John Payne winds up in his hectic pursuit of Betty Grable after the pair have quarreled over their latest Broadway show. It's a perfect place for a romantic rendezvous, except for one thing. Jealousy has opened its big green eye. And the result? Listen. Say, what is this friendship between you two? Oh, we just had a little heart-to-heart -heart talk in the powder room. You know, as girls will. I see. Incidentally, Rosita told me how fond she was of you. Yeah. It's a fondness that finally blossomed into the real thing. Must have been one of those blossoms that bloom overnight. You only met her 24 hours ago in Detroit. Oh, you haven't changed a bit, and neither is your acting. You're still the biggest ham and the biggest phony that ever drew a breath. One of the causes of Betty's outburst is that South American ball of fire, Carmen Miranda, who's at her dynamic best in springtime in the Rockies as John Payne's secretary by accident. One of the high spots of the picture is Carmen Miranda singing, in her native tongue, the hit song, Chattanooga Choo Choo. Go explicar, e é o Chattanooga Choo Choo. 
Chuchu é um trem que vai, que vai me levar perto de alguém. Pois numa estação que passa o tchata no cachuchu. Eu vou saltar, se vou, se vou mesmo se o trem não parar. E você pega o trem na frente, um panis station às três horas e tal. Pouco a pouco vai saindo da capital. Toma um pezinho e tira uma pistana. E come um ramenek lá em Carolina. Pro americano, trem vai em todo o bar. Pouco a pouco, 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 pouco,
How would you like to go to your say hello to your neighbor? Let's go to that Pan American Jubilee. Come on and drink a toast to your and get close to your neighbor. Let's go to that Pan American Jubilee. You're gonna see the way those lads like the jitterbug, like the cutter rug, like the Yankee Doodle Dandy, like to do a room style. And a samba going down in history as a jumping fiesta. Bring your chum along and come along with me. De construir um bocadinho de samba de tango e de milonga. Let's go to the Pan American Jubilee. Depois te faz uma mistura de rumba com um pouquinho de conga. Bring your chama along and come along with me. Look at the alligator from the equator. Ai, my dear Buck. Can you cut the rug? Ai, can cut the rug just like a Yankee doodle at the end. Time in the Rockies is time for furious fun, tantalizing tunes, and gorgeous girls. With a cast of brilliant stars bringing you a sparkling story woven of music and laughter. Betty Grable, John Payne, Carmen Miranda, Harry James and his music makers, Cesar Romero, Charlotte Greenwood, Edward Everett Horton. It's a rollicking, star-spangled cast that means tops and entertainment. It's another 20th Century Fox miracle musical. Springtime in the Rockies. Bring your chum along and come on with me. Come along and grandma and the world and the world. Hi, this is Porchlight Marketing Manager Austin Packard. Thank you for listening to WPMT. If you value programming like this, please consider making a donation today at porchlightmusictheater.org. We appreciate your consideration and hope you enjoy the show. In New York's 42nd Street Theater, the curtain is soon to go up on the final performance of the season's most successful musical comedy. There's nothing at all unusual about this performance, except one thing. Dan Christie, the leading man, is mysteriously absent. I just went through the whole building, Miss Lane, from the boiler room to the top of the flagpole. He just ain't here. Well, keep on looking, Joe, please. Oh, Matt. I phoned the Astor Bar, the Waldorf Grill, the Traveler's Aid, and Kresselmeyer's Fish Grotto. No Danny boy. Did you look in the... Yeah, there, too, in all the dressing rooms, Vicky. Oh, Max, what will we do? There's still ten minutes before you and he appear. What if he got run over? He may be in a hospital unconscious. For that, Danny, don't need a hospital. I wonder, did he think we closed last night? Oh, we've got to find him, Max. We've just got to. Yes, they're searching everywhere for Dan Christie. Everywhere except right in front of the theater, where Dan's having rather a difficult time saying goodnight to a most engaging young lady. Well, thanks a lot for dropping me by, Marilyn. You've got lots of time yet, Danny. You said you didn't have to change. Yeah, well, i I got to make up. Oh, I know. I'll come in and watch you. Oh, uh, some other time, honey. I... Oh, well, wait a minute. Your chin lipstick, darling. Oh, oh, that's fine. Yeah. Here, my handkerchief. And thanks. Well, yeah. Mm. Well, how's that? Perfect. You'll phone me tomorrow? Oh, sure. Good night, Danny. Good night. Well, Phoebe, any luck? I'm only your agent, honey, not his. No, no luck. Phil, no. you said something about Danny breaking a dinner date tonight. Well, that's right. He, he said he'd have a surprise for me. Maybe this is the surprise, not showing up. Danny, Danny, is that you? Oh, Danny, where have you... Oh, Victor. Oh, how nice. Vicky. Yes, just as I thought. Time has succeeded in making you only more exquisite. Oh, I thank you. Hi. Hello, Phoebe. You haven't changed a bit. 
Ah, uh, Vicky Lane in person, in the flesh. And a couple of pounds too much of it. That was always one good thing about being your dancing partner, Victor. You were so strenuous, I never got above 110. You, Miss Lane, be ready for your entrance. Thanks, Joe. I'm sorry, Victor, but I've got a show to do. After the show, maybe? Well, uh, how about intermission time? Come back then, huh? Wonderful. I'll see you then, darling. Goodbye, Phoebe. What a character. Oh, he's all right. Oh, where's Dan? Now, don't get yourself upset over nothing. Nothing? Remember Boston? That doesn't count. She chased him. It's always a girl when he's late. I just hated to admit it. Well, of course I'm here. What's everybody so worked up about? Hello, baby. Oh, Danny. See you later, kids. Come on, Max. Let's scram. Huh? Oh, sure. Danny, where were you? Just out shopping for something. And uh, when did you start using perfume? What? Oh. Oh, well, uh, that's some new toilet water I'm trying out. Too strong, baby? No, too expensive. That's called Surrender, Dan. $32 an ounce. And the only girl I know who can afford to smell at $32 an ounce is that Park Avenue Deb from the neck up Marilyn Irwin. Well, now you're just getting feminine. Hey, you two on stage. Your number is next. We're coming. Surrender. Hmm. Did you? Ouch! Watch where you're going. You were born suspicious. Come on, my public is calling it. Your public? Your public? Well, of all the conceited, of all the... Oh, it's our public. Well, smile, will you? Mm, is that better, Mr. Christie? That's just wonderful. Just wait till we're through with this number. Just wait. Oh, listen, a dame like you ought to be here. Oh, pipe down. We're on. Don't let the thunder scare you. Don't let it wear you down. You may get wet, but you never can drown in the rain. Don't be afraid of showers. Feel like the flowers do. Cares will be nil if you will trill a silly refrain. Start singing. Run, little raindrop, run. Get along, little cloud, get along. I've got a date with a place in the sun, so run, little raindrop, run. Sing, little bluebird, sing. Mr. Gloom is afraid of a song. Go away, little blackbird. Stay, little bluebird. Run, run little, little raindrop, run. You'd better go, or as sure as I live, you're gonna wind up deep, deep down. In the dreary river Run, little raindrop, run Get along, little cloud, get along I've got a date with a place in the sun So run, little, little raindrop, raindrop, run All right, Mickey, better get into your own costume Well, now, if you must know why I was late I was out looking at engagement rings May I see it, Danny? The ring? Well, it's still at the jewelers, but... Oh, the... why? Well, uh, because I'm having an inscription put on the inside. Oh, I guess you've got to know everything, huh? Okay. The inscription says, To Vicky with love, together till the final curtain. Oh, Danny. It costs $2 a word and won't be ready till Wednesday. Together to the final curtain. Don't you like it? The most beautiful words I ever heard. Oh, darling. Well, uh, now it's a little better. Forgive me, Danny. Sure, sure, but you shouldn't act up like that, honey. Hey, now, no tears, Vicky, please. I just can't help it, Dan. Tears and mascara don't mix. I like your eyes plain. I'll just borrow that handkerchief. Here you are, honey. Oh, no, no, not that one. I... Were you going to say something, Danny? Uh-uh, no. Awfully tiny handkerchief, Danny. Are these your initial initials? Yeah. No, no, no. I just borrowed it from one of the stagehands. I had something in my eye. Like uh, lipstick? Could be paint. Could be, Dan. And those initials could stand for Murder Incorporated. But they don't. They stand for Marilyn Irwin. You were out with her, weren't you? After promising me I was me not to... out with her. I just bumped into her. Hmm, from the looks of the lipstick, it must have been quite a collision. Oh, why am I trying to kid myself? Look, Vicky, Vicky, you can't convict a guy on circumstantial evidence. I've told you the truth. And I've had all I'm going to take. That's the truth, too. But won't you even let Better me... Hurry up and change, Mr. Christie. He'll never change. Hey, Vicky, your costume. You've got that other number with Dan in two minutes. Not in two minutes or two centuries. Do you hear, everybody? I'm walking out. I'm through. Bartender. Here you are, sir. Twenty minutes ago, I asked for that bourbon soda. Where'd you get it from, Kentucky? Oh, no, sir. <laughs> However, I have been to Kentucky. 
A state sometimes referred to as the cradle of the West. Hmm. Where are all the customers? Well, it's quite late, sir. I venture they've all gone home. Now, if you'd just go home, everything would be perfect. Danny, boy. Danny. Oh, go away from me. I've been looking for you all night. Bartender, will you throw this bomb out? Such an attitude. And me, your agent. And what an agent. The show closed over a month ago and still no backers for a new one. I repeat, Commissioner. Beat it. Scram. But I have got the backers. I don't believe you. Pickle and Brown, they'll put up a hundred grand. But there's just one little thing. Like, for instance? Well, Bickle and Brown want Vicky in the show, too. Oh, no, no, never. Not after what she did to me. Walked out on me, left me flat. Listen, Danny, you're too big a man to hold a grudge. Look at how ridiculous it strikes me. Ha, 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 ha. Look, fat boy. Even if I were willing to forgive Miss Lane, which I'm not, she is not available. Miss Lane is 2,000 miles away at a place called Lake Louise in the Canadian Rockies. They have wolves in the Canadian Rockies, and one of them is their dancing partner, Mr. Victor Prince. Yeah, I know all about that. That's why I brought you these tickets. Tickets? Yeah, you fly there tomorrow. What makes you think she'd leave Victor Prince for Bickle and Brown? She's not to know anything about them. you got to break her come back to New York just for you, and in ten days. Oh, but Vicky hates me. Oh, look, just turn on the old charm. Make her see what a romantic little guy she walked out on. And don't mention B&B at all. But why should I go to all that trouble? You really want to know why? Because Bickle and Brown have a funny feeling that without Vicky, you're all washed up. They said it to me, and I say it to you. Now, what do you say? Blow. Okay, I'll blow. But there are your tickets. You know, they say that Lake Louise is remarkably scenic, sir. It's referred to constantly as, <laughs> and I quote, the jewel of the Canadian Rockies. Get me another drink. I can still hear you. Yes, sir. <laughs> Come on, Vicky. We've danced enough. Always leave them wanting more. Good, I'm tired. I've arranged for a table, just you and I. Mm, perfect. You're wonderful, Victor. Simply wonderful. Yeah, thank you so much. Oh, come, come on, Vicky. Come on, over. Oh, oh, thank you. You're all very sweet, gentlemen, but I was about to sit down with Mr. Prince. Oh, you're oh, oh, Well, maybe he won't mind if uh, Vicky, I... Vicky, our table's over there, darling. Well, then again, maybe he will mind. Thanks anyway, gentlemen. Well, yes, we are most flattered. Most flattered. Well, Vicky, on an occasion like this, our triumph at Lake Louise, it calls for something very special. I make you a brandy o' victor. Now, let me see. Captain, uh, you bring nutmeg up there? <laughs> How clumsy of me. A knife on the floor, Victor. That always used to mean a strange man would arrive. Remember? Yeah, we were so silly, darling. Now, where was I? Oh, yes. Nutmeg, Captain. Up A bit of lemon peel. Castilian, of course. Head. Oh. What's the matter? Who are you? McTavish is the name, sir. Your valet. Oh, my valet. My valet? Your valet, sir. You hired me yesterday afternoon, sir, in New York. I always thought a fellow saw pink elephants. So now it's valets, huh? Why don't you remember, sir? The cocktail bar? Oh, yeah, I'm beginning to. You insisted I give up everything and come with you. <laughs> so we took the plane. What plane? Where am I? The Chateau Lake Louise. Heart of the Canadian Rockies. You've just been napping. You wouldn't happen to know what I'm doing here besides napping. Well, I believe the nature of your mission has to do with a young lady, sir. Vicky? Excellent, sir. Oh, yeah. It all comes back. Bickle and Brown. Back in ten days with Vicky Lane. Back in ten days with Vicky Lane. <laughs> Pardon the levity, sir, but it sounds like a slogan. So how long have you been talking like information, please? Well, it all started, sir, when my Aunt Stephanie died. It was in her will. Oh, Left you a lot of big words, huh? Her will stipulated that as long as I went to college, I would receive $10,000 a year. I've been going to school now for 20 years, sir. I, uh, I graduated last month. 20 years in one school? I have diplomas from five, sir. Any from bartender's college? Well, I became a bartender last week, sir. After 20 years of school books, I was determined to learn about life. Tell me, what's the melting point of magnesium, quick? Uh, 3,500 degrees Fahrenheit, sir. Mm-hmm. Besides the Turkish alphabet. Ada, they say, they say, Jim Shimaha. Is that correct, sir? How do I know? It sounds correct. It sounds impossible. All right, Mac, hang around. Oh, thank you, sir. Hey, no, for a minute I thought I was hearing music. But you are, sir. Your secretary and her brother. Why, what? Why not go inside and renew acquaintance with her? She's the most interesting creature. Well, just try and keep me out of there. Vou explicar que é um chata no cachucho. Chucho é um trem que vai, que vai me levar perto de alguém. Hoje é uma estação que passa o chata no cachucho. Eu vou 
vou só lutar Se vou, se vou, mesmo se o trem não parar E você pega o trem na Prince Urban Station Às três horas de tarde Pouco a pouco vai saindo da capital Toma um cafezinho e tira uma pestona E come uns remenegues lá em Carolana Pro americano tem barreto de bar Mas para o brasileiro está querendo sambar Vão se que vão, vai levar Vão, 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 vão se que vão Pois o maquinista pode ser tambista Oh, oh, chata no cadere rua Vou, 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 vou encontrar Vou certo alguém que não me espera na estação Um certo alguém Aí o tupão foi limpei Pois tem cara de Spencer 3 Quero chegar Pois sei que lá vai ser pra lá de bom Sou chata no cachucho Anto chucho, anto chucho Me ramo chata no cachata no cachata no cachata O chata no cachata no cachata no cachata O chata no cachata O chata no cachata Achá, achá Achucho Well, well, hello. Please do not bargain while I'm seeing with you, please. Oi, too, Mr. Christie. Oh. Well, don't better do it. Do you know who you are? My name is Rosita, Rosita Murphy. Murphy? <laughs> sure, your new secretary. Oh, no. Yes, yes, that's quite right, sir. You hired her when we stopped in Detroit. She was at the souvenir counter at the airport. Well, you were having some little troubles and I fixed for you. Little troubles? Uh-huh. You want to send your photograph to a little girls, but you did not want to just to know what it was from, and I think. Oh, thanks. I send her one of me, then you say I got a new job working for you, and I like very much. Uh, tell me, Snow White, who are the seven dwarfs? My brothers. They play nice music, you know. Mm. Of course, I hired them, too. <laughs> you insist. They love me so much, and you say, whole bunch come alone, too. Well... Now, that clears everything. Yes, and rather a happy little establishment it is, sir. Look, do me one favor. You are the boss, you wish slaves. Then just stay here till I come back, all of you. Sure, we have to practice the music anyway. Goodbye. Uh, I'm going to go downstairs. I want to find Vicky Lane. Excellent, sir. Vinny, Vidi, Vicky. Hmm? I came, I saw, I conquered. Oh, yeah? I came, I saw, I went on the wagon. I'll be back in a little while, Mac Davis. Almost finished. Brandy O Victor. You know, I got the recipe straight from the Sultan of Indore, the richest man in the world. One taste, Vicky, you feel the same way. I still think I should have ordered a sandwich. Why don't you let me get it for you? Dan, what in the world are you... I hope I'm not interrupting anything. Oh, no. Oh, excuse me, Victor. This is Mr. Christie, Mr. Prince. Oh. Oh, yes. Vicky's dancing partner, huh? That's one way of expressing it, yes. You mean there's another way? Look, Dan, it's beautiful, isn't it? Oh. Oh, a ring, yeah, I see an engagement ring, Dan. Isn't it exciting? Yes, it's very exciting. Well, I, I guess I'll be running along. Oh, no, sit down, please. It'll be ready in just a second now. Another of my specialties. Brandy O Victor. Now the front throw. Just ten more drops. Oh! Did you say brandy or blockbuster, O Victor? I can't understand it. It's not supposed to do that. Well, Vicky, I... I hope your married life won't be quite so explosive. Well, thank you, Dan, but I'm really very happy. Well, that's great. That's fine. Well, I think I'll go upstairs now. It's not so noisy. There's only a chattanooga, chattanooga, choo choo choo, a chattanooga, chattanooga, choo choo. Dan, what's the matter with you? Oh, nothing at all, nothing at all. That was, wasn't the brandy that exploded, Vicky. Only my heart. Good night. Good night, Dan. Hmm. Peculiar fellow. Very. He's turning around. He's looking at us. Oh, quick, kiss me. Darling. Uh, how was that? Exactly right. He's gone now. And I don't think Mr. Christie will trouble us again. Dan Christie came to Lake Louise to bring Vicki Lane back to New York. But his eyes have just seen what his head had never thought of. Vicky Lane in Victor Prince's arms. And on her third finger, left hand, a very impressive engagement ring. Returning to his rooms, Dan calls for his scholarly valet, McTavish. Pack the bags, McTavish. We're leaving. You know, it's remarkable, Mr. Christie, convincing Miss Lane like that. Yeah, but I flopped. She's in love, McTavish. And I guess that lets me out in all directions. I've lost my girl and I've lost my next show. Come on, take a wire for me to the commissioner. You remember my agent? Indeed, sir, but I believe wire taking is more within the realm of your secretary. Yeah? Miss Murphy. Oh, Miss Murphy? Hey, Murph! You called, boss? I called you. Good, we come. Okay, boys, in the tools. João Alves, Francisco, Manuel, Gustavo, Cristóvão, and Patrick Murphy, Jr. All present, boys. Bye, bye, bye. Look, uh, Murph. Yes? 
I don't need them. I just want to talk to you. Oh, why don't you say so? Okay, boys, scram. Boom, boom. Oh, oh, come 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 around. Around. I want you to send a wire for me, Murph. We're leaving. We're going home. You go home, mate, but I stay. Right, Mac? Uh, yes, and we had toyed with a thought, uh, Miss Murphy and I, of staying here for quite a while, sir, uh, to study glaciers. Well, I can get a job from the hotel. They hear my brogs and me practice, and boom, they right away they say we work for them. All right, Murphy, you can stay if you want to. Oh, Murphy, 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 five years and more, I scream. Well, that's your name, isn't it? Yes, it's my name. My father is Murphy, my mother Brazilian. Since years ago, Papa ran away from my mama. Two years ago, brother and I come up to not to look for my papa. But this U.S.A. ship full of a Patrick Murph. Hey, what do you look at me like that? You're pretty cute. You say that too, my savage. Oh, well, that's purely an academic observation. Look, you know, I got a great idea. Get into your room, Rosita, and into your best dress. Understand? Oh, you got six, maybe, huh? Yeah, oh. yeah, right away, mm -hmm. right away. <laughs> Tell you what we'll do. What we'll do, we'll go downstairs to the supper club. I, I, I want to make an impression. Mm -hmm. I, uh, you know, kind of make someone jealous, maybe? Oh, I see. I'm the bite, and she's the big fish, huh? Mm, yeah. <laughs> now, don't mind if I take a few innocent liberties. Why not? This is the land of liberty, yes. Yeah? Well, Murph, enjoying yourself? Oh, I love it. Well, I like very much, but when will you get to work? Well, that's their table over there. I, uh... I hope you don't mind dancing so close. I think it's so much cozier. But when you dance at Roomba, she's not supposed to be so cozy. But it's okay by me, big boy. <laughs> there they are. Well, here we are again. Oh, hello, old man. And Phoebe. Well, don't look so surprised, Phoebe. It's my natural expression. Naturally, yes. Oh, excuse me. Uh, this is my secretary, Miss Murphy. Miss Vicky Lane, Miss Phoebe Gray, and Mr. Victor Prince. How do you do? I'm sure I'm fine, thanks. How do you do? How do you do? Well, Vicky, didn't you get that sandwich yet? A long ago, but won't you join us? You and your secretary? Well, we were going to sit on the table. Oh, please, I insist. Okay, Rosita? Thanks so much. Perfectly stunning gown you're wearing, Miss Murphy. Patty Carnegie? I should say not. Chris Butters for me, yes, Chrissy? Well, you see, Miss Murphy has a sense of humor. She's a cinch for my next show. <laughs> I'll bet she's a barrel of laughs. Oh, I'm awfully glad you think so, Vicky. You see, girls who are just beautiful are a dime a dozen. But when you find one with a sense of humor, ah, then you really got something. If you'll excuse me, Victor, I'd like to go to the powder room. Well, hurry back, darling. I'll go too, Miss Lange. My face is a mess, too. Phoebe. Huh? What's cooking? I don't know what's cooking, but I know someone's stewing. Good. Well, I don't know, Miss Lange, but I think I'm going to like your people. You are being so nice to me. It's strictly unintentional, I assure you. Well, thank you. Mm, I wish I was a blonde like you. Maybe I bleach my hair, too. Oh, you're terribly witty, Miss Murphy. But my hair is naturally blonde. Well, shut my mouth. Don't breathe it to a stool and nobody will know the difference. Look, I don't know what you're after, but you don't stand a chance with Dan Christie. Huh? I think you know what I mean. Maybe I do, do you? You bet I do. What's the trouble, Miss Lane? You got a hard time finding boyfriends? Of course not, and don't change the subject. I don't know what your relations are with Dan, but I know that you're not... We are no relations. He's just my boss. Oh, then it's only natural you're head over heels in love with him, huh? The love? <laughs> don't make me laugh. Not in the head and not in the heels. Nowhere. You're sure? You're quite sure? Was it totally? I know him since yesterday. He's what you call just a push-up. Oh, oh you mean a, a pick-up? That's it. He picked me up in the toilet and sit me down here. Just between me and you, Miss Lent, I think he has something up his sleeve. Oh? He say I go place with him and I give him, I give him a big fever. Fever? Mm -hmm, that's what I say. Oh, you mean favor. That's what I say, fever, yes. Oh. Well, tell me more, Rosita. Tell me everything. You know, you're beginning to grow on me. Well, a little while ago, Chris said he got a big idea and he said he's my best. Well, I wonder what's keeping Vicky and your charming secretary. I hope they hit it off all right. What worries me is who hit first. Phoebe, go to the powder room. If they're still alive, bring them back, will you? Even if they're mangled beyond... Well, get a load of that. What? Here they come, giggling like a couple of schoolgirls. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting terribly stuffy in here. Should we get some air, Vicky? I like it here, Victor. I'll go to you, Mr. Prince, if it's okay with my boss. No, but I didn't mean that. <laughs> Can I get the air, Christy? You're off duty, Murph. Come on, Mr. Let's go. Yeah, let's go, Victor. Yeah, I'll be right back, darling. 
Well, it's a shame to let this nice lake air go to waste, Vicky. Don't be silly. You're not afraid to take a little walk with me, are you? That's ridiculous. Come on, we'll catch up with them. Oh, we'll go the other way. Unless you don't think you can trust yourself. Well, of all the... Come on, let's go. Oh, my. What a night. Would you look at that moon? Too bad your secretary's with Victor. There are some lovely places around here at the lake where you could dictate. I, uh, I take it you don't approve of Miss Murphy. Oh, but I do. I find her frankness most refreshing. Say, what is this sudden friendship between you two? Oh, we just had a little heart-to-heart -heart talk in the powder room. You know, as girls will. Yeah. Listen, Vicky. remember that song? I ought to. We sang it every night for almost a year. I bet you've forgotten the words already. Mm, I wish I could. I've got a memory like Dumbo. Yeah? Is that bad? Mm, it's awful. I remember every note and every word. In a dream, the strangest and the oddest things appear. And what insane and silly things we do. Here is one I see before me vividly and clear. As I recall it, you were in it too. mine, so I kissed you, you didn't mind it at all, when I'm awake, such a break never happens, how long can a guy go on dreaming, if there's a chance that you can. What a ham. Hmm? Well, now what did I do? You probably fixed the whole thing with the orchestra leader. Our old love song. Thought I'd do the trick, did you, Danny? How could you say things like that? Oh, Dan, you're still the biggest phony that ever drew a breath. You figured that all you needed was a romantic backdrop and some sentimental music, and I'd hop right back into your lap again. All right. Maybe that was the general idea. There must be a good reason why I'd go to all this trouble. Do you ever think of that? Mm, I'll say there's a good reason. Like all selfish, dishonest people, you need someone to take advantage of. Well, you can get yourself a new rag doll. Even if I weren't in love with Victor, do you think I'd get back on that little merry-go-round of yours? Okay, sister. You win. I'll leave. Good. When? As soon as you relax and listen to me. I'm relaxed. Go ahead. Okay. There. Oh, Dan. Now, will you listen to me? All night long, darling. Go ahead. Oh. There. sincerely in love with Vicky, but his carefully timed technique to win her back has earned him only a well-aimed, though feminine, right uppercut. But he's strangely elated as he reports his evening's progress to McTavish. Well, everything's fine, McTavish. She wants me to go away and never to see her again. Oh, how nice. Oh, oh what am I saying? McTavish, any time a woman never wants to see you again, that means she can't exist without you. Really, sir? Uh, your scientific approach to a woman's heart is amazing. Thank you, McTavish. And the next step is what, sir? The tenderness routine. Remind me in the morning to get some long-stemmed roses. Now it is morning. Much too early for Danny or Vicky to be up, but well into the day, as far as McTavish and Rosita are concerned. Say, McTavish, what did you think of the crazy boys we have, Christy? Oh, Christy, he's an extraordinary gentleman. Just like you, huh? Oh, now, you know nothing about me. 
You're just a little girl. Uh, a little girl. I, on the other hand, where well, my whole life was abruptly changed by the inheritance of a goodly sum of toothpaste stock. What did you do to space, smart boy? I am learning life. Good, I help you. Well, I want to find out just what makes people tick. Look, why don't you tell me before you are a millionaire? Oh, no, I'm not. I'm worth only in the neighborhood of, say, $600,000. That's the kind of neighborhood I like it. <laughs> you want to know what makes people go tick, huh? You should listen to me because I'm ticking all the time. Are you really? Mm -hmm. Yes, listen. I'm listening. Good. Hey, boys, come in. Oh, oh my goodness. Just my brothers. Let's go. We serenade McTavish. O tico tico tá outra vez aqui. O tico tico tá comendo meu fubá. O tico tico tem tem que se alimentar e vai comer o mais melhor que no fubá. O tico 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 tá tá outra vez aqui. O tico tico tá comendo meu fubá. O tico tico tem tem que se alimentar e vai comer o mais melhor que no fubá. Mas por favor, tira esse bicho do celeiro porque ele acaba comendo o fubá inteiro. Tira esse tico de cá que se mata o meu fubá. Tem muita coisa que ele pode finitar. Já fiz tudo para ver se conseguia. Comeu o bicho para ver se ele comia. Botei um gato, um espantalho em nossa bomba Mas ele acha que pro pai é que é bom alimentar o sangue O tico-tico tá, tá outra vez aqui O tico-tico tá comendo meu fubá O tico-tico tem que se alimentar Que vai comer uma dinhaca no fubá O tico-tico, tico-tico tá, tá outra vez aqui O tico-tico tá comendo meu fubá O tico-tico tem que se alimentar Que vai comer uma dinhaca no fubá Mas por favor, tira esse bicho do celeiro Porque ele acaba comendo o fubá inteiro Tira esse tico de cá e se mata o meu fubá Tem tanta coisa que ele pode vir Acha que o fubá é que é boa alimentação O tico-tico tá, tá outra vez aqui O tico-tico tá comendo meu fubá O tico-tico tem, tem que se alimentar Que vai comer umas minhocas no fubá O tico-tico, tico-tico tá, tá outra vez aqui O tico-tico tá comendo meu fubá O tico-tico tem, tem que se alimentar Que vai comer umas minhocas no fubá You like my tavish? Ah, tick me again, Miss Murphy Ah, tick, tick, you, Phoebe. Come on in. What were these roses doing out in the hall? I threw them there, of course. Why? He sent them. Oh, how I hate that man. Victor? No, Dan Christie. Somebody call me? Oh, hello, girl. What is this? My, Phoebe, aren't you the little flower girl, though? You know, I think you might find some customers in the lobby for those roses. I get it. I'm a quick study. Thanks for leaving your door open. Good luck, you stinker. If you don't leave this room at once, I'll call Victor. I'd like to call him something myself. Oh, you wait. You just wait. Hello? Mr. Victor Prince, please. Hello, Victor. Darling, how about coming over to see me, hmm? Oh, wonderful. Right away, thank you. Goodbye. Now do you believe me? Now do you believe me? <laughs> you see, the telephone always works better if you plug it in. See? Like this. Now, there. Would you like to try it again? Mr. Victor Prince, please. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Victor Prince, please. Hello, darling? This is Vicky, and I'm terribly lonesome. Of course I do, sweet. Terribly, terribly. You will? Oh, and hurry, please, darling. I'm all alone. Gee, thanks. In one minute? Well, I don't know if I can wait that long, but I'll try. Goodbye. Well, I've got to give you credit. I, I, I didn't think you'd do it. Well, I did, so please get out. Uh-uh. Danny. No, I'll just hide. I want to listen. Oh, please go, Danny. <laughs> Danny's room is only two doors away, and if he sees you, he'll... Uh-oh. Oh, the window, Dan. Go out the window and down the fire escape. But I may break my neck. Well, then do it quietly. Vicky, I'm here. I'm coming, darling. Ah, uh, don't move, darling. Look at you. A Picasso. Huh? A painting. Oh. Oh, if only a painter could capture those eyes and lips, it would be a masterpiece, and it would hang on my heart. Oh, sit down, Victor. You know, dear, your loneliness has made me so happy. Frankly, Vicky, up to this minute, I've been a little worried about the fellow named Christy. Oh, silly. But when you just phoned me, I knew somehow that he was gone, lost far, far away in your past. He is gone, isn't he? Well, of course, darling. And now, now you're completely mine. Uh, Victor, uh, why don't you try that chair? It's much more comfortable than my lap. Mm. 
Darling, you're not avoiding me again. I couldn't stand that. I know. Let's order dinner. No, food doesn't interest me in the least right now. Well, well how about a nice long walk? Well, Vicky, what on earth is the matter with you? Oh, I know. You just want to tease me. But I'm not going to let you. Oh, no, 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 stop. Actually, I simply don't understand you. You want me here because you're lonesome. Right away, you want to get rid of me. All right, I'll go. Oh, no. Well, if you could just stay here and, and maybe play... Huh? Gin Rummy. I love Gin Rummy. I wish you could say you loved me with as much feeling. Well, I do love you, Victor. More than you loved him? I detest, despise, and loathe the worm. It baffles me what I ever saw in him. Yes, whatever possessed you, sweetness, that puffed-up third-rate baritone. Yes. Third-rate baritone? Well, you half-baked second lieutenant. If I couldn't do better than that... Where did you come from? <laughs> Vicky, what is this man doing here? Why, I, I haven't the slightest idea. Now I understand. Now I know why you wanted to eat, to go walking, to play gin rummy. Now, Victor, don't be ridiculous. Now, how can I be any more ridiculous than you've already made me? Sticking that man on the balcony while I try to make love to you. Of all the insincere, dishonest females. Victoria, I will thank you to give me back my ring. Here. Hmm, little scratched, I see. So will you be if you don't move fast. Don't worry, I'm going. Of course, you know this means Victor must find a new partner. I hope she has spikes on her dancing slippers. Oh, I'm sorry, honey. I, I was marooned. There isn't any fire escape. Well, a gentleman would have jumped. You know, a... Your finger's going to feel awful funny without a ring on it, sweetheart. Please take this one, Vicky. The diamond may not be as big, but I don't think people will notice. Give it to me. There. Out the window? You threw it out the window? And I hope you'll follow it, Danny, right now. Achoo! Achoo! Who's, Who's that? that? Oh. Looking for the ring, too? I am not. I've just been taking a walk. At four o'clock in the morning? I couldn't sleep. Me either. Sit down, Vicky. Cigarette? Well, I'll sit down for a minute. Swell. Danny, I told a lie just now. I was looking for the ring. I hope you find it. I did. Just as you sneezed. Oh, I'm so glad. I, I'm awfully sorry I got mad tonight, but I just... Oh, that's all right. I, I, I really got off lucky. I thought Victor was a world's champion heel, but, well, meet the new champ. As long as I have to choose between two heels, I may as well pick the one I love, huh? That is, if you still feel the same way, Danny. Do I? Oh, Vicky. And you'll always be honest with me, won't you? Honey, that sound you just heard is Dan Christie turning over a brand new leaf. Oh, let's get away from everybody. Let's go upstairs now and pack and catch the first plane out in the morning. Well... You know, even in the dark, you look terrific. You kind of glow somehow. Oh, Vicky, it's too good to be true. Yahoo! Oh, shh, you'll wake up, everybody. I hope so. Yahoo! Hey, what are you doing awake at this hour, McTavish? Good morning, sir. That moron woke you up, too, I see, with his yelling. It's all fixed, McTavish. She said yes. Vicky's going to marry me. Oh, how splendid, sir. Both maritally and commercially. Huh? She's going to do the show, too, isn't she? Oh. Well, she doesn't know about that yet. Oh. Now, stop worrying and start getting us packed. We're leaving right after breakfast. Oh, are we? Where to, sir? I'll take it. Hello? Hello, darling. Oh, hello. I, I sure miss you. Me, too. Danny, I was just wondering, when we leave, where are we going? Where? You know, I was just thinking about the same thing. I got a wonderful idea, darling. How about New York? New York must be a wonderful place for a honeymoon. Oh, let's be old-fashioned and go to Niagara Falls. Oh, it's too corny. Manhattan in the spring. Doesn't it just give you a lump in the throat thinking about it? But you know how much we both like scenery, Danny, and Niagara Falls is... Oh, darling, you're all the scenery I'll ever want. Oh, all right, honey. You're the boss. New York it is. I'll see you in the morning. 8.30? It's a date. Good night, Danny. Good night. Good night. Good night. Well, you're up early this morning, Miss Lane No, no mail Well, I'll be checking out soon And I wanted to get my bill And, oh, Miss Lane Murph, oh, I have so much to tell you Look, how about having breakfast with me? Sure, I have breakfast, but Can I come too, Vicky? Commissioner Just thought I'd pay Danny a visit Where are you going? Back to the big town, New York. Really? Uh-huh. That's wonderful, Vicky. Great. Believe me, you'll never regret it. It's a terrific show, and what a part you've got. 
Wait a minute. What show? What part? Like Danny told you. It's all set, huh? Oh, I see. Just another of his cheap tricks. Anything to get me back to Broadway with him. Vicki, what is this? What are you trying to tell me? Well, listen very closely. Vicki Lane is not available. I'm not going to do any show. But I'll give him one performance right now that he'll never forget. Where's that elevator? Please, please. To me. Please, Bert, please. I'm busy. I've got a plane to catch. You won't catch any airplane. She's so mad. Tell Ooh. me later. Tell me later. I tell you now, you stubborn mule. Some man in the lobby, he spoiled the beans. All right, go ahead. What how beans? Do... What man? How do I know? He's fat like a ripe popotamus. Commissioner. What did I tell you? He tells her about the terrific park in the show. Oh. I run right up to tell you, but if you ask me right after me, he's running Miss Lane to tell you herself and not so sweetly. Oh, Murph, Murph, I'm Blake. She'll never believe me this time. She'll never believe I was more interested in her than I could possibly be in 20 shows. Oh, that honeymoon in New York cooked me good. If I'd only agreed to Niagara Falls. Here, take these. What is this? Oh, our tickets to New York. Get some more on the same plane. Enough for you, Mac, all of us. I want to get out of this place as soon as possible. Dan. Come in, Vicky. Now, please don't start explaining now, anything, Vicky, Dan. Darling, I... You don't really blame me, do you? I've had about all the lies and alibis I can stand. Aha, uh -huh. love birds, huh? How's the Juniper bride feel? I wouldn't know. Aha, uh -huh. downstairs in the lobby we start to talk, but a fat man pushed me out. Look what I have, see? Tickets, tickets to Niagara Falls. Chris tell me to get two tickets to Niagara Falls. But I don't... Not New York? Who wants to go to New York? And besides, I got witness. Hey, boys, come in. É ou não é verdade que foi verdade essa coisa que eu tô dizendo pra vocês? É ou não é? You see? You see? Two tickets and seven witnesses in Portuguese. Oh, Danny. Danny. Oh, that's all right, baby. You, you see, I... Well, I just wanted to surprise you. Look, Danny. After Niagara, could we go straight down to New York? Sure. But why? To put on a show. We'll put on our own show. Vicky, but with what, honey? It takes at least $60,000. We'll soon find out with what. Rosita. Yes, ma'am. Get everybody together quickly in my room. Phoebe, mm -hmm. the commissioner, and everybody. And hurry. Come on, commissioner. Add it up. What's it come to? How much? Relax. All told, including Rosita's piggy bank, we're still a mere 35000 short. Wait a minute. Toothpaste. Huh? Mark Tavish, what is he? Inside, isn't he Dan packing? Yeah, but... Uh, oh, Mark Tavish, toothpaste. He has bottles of toothpaste. In my language, that's plenty beaucoup. Six hundred thousand dollars. Six hundred thousand. All in toothpaste. I better start squeezing. Uh. <laughs> oh, Mark Tavish. Uh, yes, sir? Mac Tavish, if, if uh, we were to put on a show, you'd be willing to hire us, wouldn't you? Oh, indeed, sir. Every one of us. Well, that's why we just decided to let you help feed the kitty. With creams, Mac Tavish, creams. All we need is $35,000. Uh, oh. Oh, well, <laughs> well, I'm sorry. I'm very sorry, really, but uh, I'm much too unfamiliar with the world of entertainment. This is where the good neighbor polish gets to work out. Yeah. And to a proposition of unsure returns, I can only answer... Uh, Matavish, come on, sweet, in the other room. Come with me. Come uh, with you, me. You pardon come me. Come <laughs> no, no. No, no, no. No. Yahoo! <laughs> but she, she, she kissed me. <gasps> no. McTavish, I'm very sorry, old boy, but I simply cannot countenance such behavior from any valet of mine. You're fired. Oh, yes, yes, you're quite right, sir, but such behavior from a, a business partner? Oh, perfectly okay. I've got all ready, front and ten and checkbook. Come on, my toots, poo spacey. The plane is now flying over beautiful Moose Jaw. Well, Mr. Christie. Yes, Stuart. The pilot just got a radio confirming all your reservations. You're all set for Niagara Falls. Gosh, thanks. Niagara Falls. Oh, hello, darling. Hello, darling. I must have been dozing. Yeah? Hey, what are you doing? Just fastening your safety belt. That stewardess is much too pretty. <laughs> What a day, what a... Oh, but I'm so happy, Danny. Just think we'll be married, Niagara Falls, then our own show on Broadway. Mm-hmm. There, you see how high up we are? Mm-hmm. I'll never touch ground again, Vicky. It'll always be like this for me, way up in the clouds. Oh, you're wonderful. I just think I'm cute. Where are the others? Rosita, Mac, and Phoebe? Sound asleep. Long ago. 
I never want to go to sleep again. No? No. When I shut my eyes, no, Vicky. Mm. You don't know what you're missing. You can't dream unless you sleep. Dream? What, for instance? Well, for instance, if there's a chance that you care, then please. Time in the Rockies was a big hit for Betty Grable and for 20th Century Fox. It grossed about $2 million and was among the 10 most successful films at the box office in 1942. In 1946, the studio records show that Fox intended to film another remake of Springtime in the Rockies, this time to be called Autumn in Acapulco, but that version was never produced. Born and raised in Portugal, Carmen Miranda made her American debut on the Broadway stage in the 1939 musical review The Streets of Paris, starring Bobby Clark, Gower Champion, and comedy team Abbott and Costello. After breaking into Hollywood in the film Down Argentine Way in 1940, she returned to New York in her second and last Broadway show, Sons of Fun, with Win Murray, Joe Besser, Ella Logan, and another top comedy team, Olsen and Johnson. Betty Grable also had two Broadway credits in her long and distinguished career. First in the original 1936 production of Do Barry Was a Lady, opposite Ethel Merman and Burt Lahr, and then 24 years later as one of the long succession of leading ladies who were the stars of Hello, Dolly! Theaters across the country need your support now, more than ever. We hope you'll consider a donation to Porchlight Music Theater today. Just go to porchlightmusictheater.org. Until next time on Classic Musicals from the Golden Age of Radio, I'm Michael Weber. Michael Weber.